Hello friends, welcome back to Scientific Blunders, where you learn the don'ts first. So the great physicist Albert Einstein once said, if you cannot explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And I think this is a really powerful statement to make because the real test of clarity in understanding a concept comes down to how simply you're able to explain it to a child. And so I often expect myself to be able to explain a complicated concept to a five-year-old to test whether I understand it well enough. So today we are actually not going to try and explain a complicated concept but a fairly simple or actually a very simple concept but we are going to try to explain it um, to a five-year-old in as interesting a manner as possible. So let's get started. Let me scroll down a little bit and just keep the quote for inspiration but let's say we have a series of numbers okay so I have a one a one and another one and I also have a two a, and another two and I have three 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 and I also have a four and a four okay now the extremely complex problem that I want you to solve is to find the average of these numbers okay um, <laughs> so many of you are probably wondering whether this is an April Fool's prank but okay let's just compute the average Okay, so the average is the average is there are three ones, correct? Or actually, I want to use the same colors just to keep track. So the average is um, there are three ones, right? And there are two twos and there are four threes and there are two fours there are two fours yes and we want to divide all of this by the number of observations that we have which is okay this is going to be tedious but let me just do it. So there are three observations of um, one, two observations of two, and we also have four observations of three, and we have two observations of four, right? And if we were to evaluate this, I hope none of you are bored at this point. I promise this video is going to become interesting, but let's just, I hope you are patient enough to get through this part so that we actually focus on the more interesting part of how to explain this to a five-year-old in an interesting way. So what is this? 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 12 is 19, right? Plus 8 is 27. Okay, I hope I did not mess that up. And we divide that by 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. Okay, so let me double check. 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 12 is 19, plus 8 is 27. And we divide that by um, 3 plus 2, 5, plus 4, 9, plus 2, 11. And 27 by 11 is, 27 divided by 11 is 2.45. Well, let's just say, if we round it, let's say it's 4, 6. Okay. So this is the average of these 11 numbers. Okay. Now, um, a five-year-old might understand this concept definitely, or let's say we wanted to explain this to a three-year-old. Okay. So three-year-old may, some three-year-olds may understand this concept, but is this the best way to explain it in a very simple and interesting manner? So I encourage you to pause the video for a second 
and see if you can think of a more interesting a more intuitive way to explain the concept of average so i hope you're done pausing the video and trying to think of um, a more innovative way to explain this so here's the thing children are very um, visual right things a picture is worth a thousand words so if you're able to draw a diagram and somehow explain the same concept that is going to be much more powerful in helping the child understand that so let's see if we can think of a way to do that okay so let me draw a set of axes okay so we have one what are the uh, numbers that we have so we have one two three and four right and how many let's say on uh, on the x-axis we have the um, the number and on the y-axis we have the number of times the number occurs so I am just labeling it F as um, frequency but you know to a five-year-old it doesn't matter what F stands for but how many observations of one are there so let me also label the y-axis before I do that so let's say there's one two three and four right so remember the x-axis is the number uh, and the y-axis is the number of times or the frequency of that number so what is the frequency of one how many times does one occur okay um, so there's one occurs three times okay so let's say it looks like this lollipop and then two occurs two times And three occurs four times and the last one is four which occurs twice so it's somewhere here okay now what exactly are we doing to calculate the average well we're saying um, the number of times it occurs 3 multiplied by 1 and what is 1 1 is the distance of this point from this line right or from the y-axis and then we are saying 2 times 2 so 2 is the number of times the number occurs and 2 is the distance of the observation from the y-axis and then 4 times 3 so 4 again is the number of times it occurs and 3 is the distance from the y-axis and similarly for the final observation as well. Now, for those of you who recall a bit of physics, um, let me just write something and let's see if it rings any bells. So the position of the center of mass of, actually, so let's just say, let me draw a diagram. Um, like I said earlier, a picture speaks a thousand words. So let's say we have four point masses. Um, M1, let me actually, yeah, let's not take the trouble to, yeah, M1, M2, M3, and M4, just the representative. Um, and let's say all of these, let's say this is the point of reference uh, somewhere here. So this is how we are measuring distances, where this is zero. And this is, you know, position. R is position. So the position of the center of mass, uh, so this is not, this is zero. It's not a point mass. So let me just place that here, okay? That's zero. So the position of the center of mass is M1 times R1 plus M2 times R2 plus M3 times R3 plus M4 times R4 and all of this oops ah, yeah all of this is going to be divided by M1 
प्लस एम टू प्लस एम थ्री प्लस एम फोर ओके सो आई एम गोन पॉज द वीडियो फॉर और आई एम गोन एनकरेज यू टू पॉज द वीडियो फॉर अ सेकेंड हियर एंड सी इफ यू नोटिस एनी पैरल बिटवीन द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ द सेंटर ऑफ मास एंड द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द एवरेज सो होप यू डन थिंकिंग अबाउट दिस if we just pattern match m1 corresponds to 3 m2 corresponds to 2 m3 corresponds to 4 m4 corresponds to 2 and r1 r2 r3 and r4 correspond to 1 2 3 and 4 right which is a, another way of saying so the center of mass is basically the weighted average right um we have four masses and we are taking an average of their positions but instead of just taking a simple average we are weighting it by the mass so because this mass is very high um the center of mass is going to tend to be closer to this um point mass similarly let's think of let's think of these lollipops as um objects okay and let's say each lollipop has a mass that is proportional to its length so the first lollipop has a mass that is proportional to 3 the second lollipop has a mass that's proportional to 2 the third lollipop has a mass that's proportional to 4 and the fourth lollipop is has a mass that's proportional to 2 okay where do you think the center of mass of these lollipops is going to lie well if we wanted to find the center of mass we would be multiplying the uh, let's say we want to find the position you know on on the x axis right so we would be multiplying the the mass of the first lollipop by the position so that would be 1 plus the mass of the second lollipop times the position which is 2 plus the mass of the third lollipop which is 4 times the position which is 3 and so on and we would be dividing that by the sum of the masses of the lollipops and i think this is nothing but the center of mass of the um lollipops which means the average that we found of 2.46 which lies somewhere here okay that is the point so let's say we had a seesaw right and let's say i actually want to draw this maybe in a different color uh how do i let's okay i want to draw a rectangle that looks like that and yeah Let's say we had a seesaw somewhere here, okay? Um, that was ma a massless seesaw, or excuse me, I meant to say a plank which balances the lollipops, and so thereby we have a seesaw now. The center of mass is the point at which you would have to place a fulcrum, such that the seesaw would be balanced, and it turns out. that the center of mass is nothing but the average and it's not just the average of 1 2 3 and 4 we are weighting the averages using the number of times the number occurs right and this um is known as a histogram right so remember i still i said we wanted to explain this to a 5 year old or a 3 year old but you know we are aware of some of the terms so i'm just mentioning them but um so the bottom line is once you draw out the histogram of the numbers the center of mass um, or the average is nothing but the position at which the entire system is going to balance right and so if i had to explain what the average of 11 numbers is to a 5 year old this is what i would say 
you take a seesaw or you take a plank okay and you take lollipops and you say you assume that the length of the lollipop is equal to the number of times that the number occurs okay and so i have four numbers here 1 2 3 and 4 and so i have four lollipops each of different lengths because 3 occurs four times 2 occurs twice 1 occurs thrice and 4 occurs twice and the average of the numbers is the point at which i have to place my hand or put a balance so that the seesaw can um, be stable right and that i think is a very interesting um, and a very nice way to explain the concept of average to a five year old and it turns out that all of mathematics is filled with these very interesting physical analogies um, so i have been wanting to explore some of these and um, i hope this video really opens your perspective into how you know how how many ways there are to analyze a concept that we all think that we know really well um, and i hope this inspires you to explain concepts to kids um, in a in a way that is interesting and that is unique so with that, um, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.